All right, so let's take a minute to understand why the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus is true. Okay, so it says if we have an antiderivative, we can use it to evaluate the definite integral. So let's suppose we have an antiderivative. Okay. Now, we already know one other means of coming up with an antiderivative, right? We could let g of x be the integral from a to x of f of t dt. Okay. Another thing we know is that if we have two antiderivatives, their difference is a constant, right? We also know that if we do g of x minus f of x, the difference between these two, it has to be some constant, right? Constant of integration. f of x is g of x plus some constant. Okay. We also know f of a minus g of a equals c. And what's the value of g of a? Zero. Okay. So that means that c is f of a. Okay. So let's put c equal to f of a up here. And, uh, and let's do something. Let's say, okay, well, what's... the integral from a to b of f of x dx, right? Well, instead of doing f of x dx, let's do f of t dt. We know it doesn't matter what letter we use. Um, that means we're putting x equal to b up here, which is the same as putting x equal to b over there. This is g of b, okay? What's g of b? Uh, well, let's see, we could rearrange this equation, right? g of x, if I move that over, bring the c over, g of x is f of x minus c. So g of b is f of b minus c. But what's c? Oh, c is f of a. Ha. That's it. That's all there is to it. Now we have this second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. All right. Now, that only took us a couple of minutes. So just for fun, Let's look at one other way of understanding the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Why not, right? This is like the most important result in all of Calc 1. Let's really nail it down. Second proof. Um, let's take any partition. All right, so we take a to be our x1 less than x2, down to xn, and then xn plus 1, which is b. So we take a partition of ab. We take our f, so we've got our f of x, right? Good. All right. Um, now, if big F is an antiderivative of little f, it's differentiable, right? And if it's differentiable, it's continuous. If we have a function which is both differentiable and continuous, the mean value theorem applies to it. So by the mean value theorem, for each i, starting at 1 and going to n, there's a ci between xi and xi plus 1, such that if I did big F at xi plus 1 minus big F at xi, I would get big F prime at that ci 
times xi minus xi minus 1. Okay? But big F prime is just little f at ci and uh, oops, plus 1. xi plus 1 minus xi, that's just delta xi. So there's some like Riemann something going on here, right? Um, there's exactly a Riemann something going on here. If you take the Riemann sum, i going from 1 to n, remember that in the Riemann sum, you're allowed to evaluate f at any point in this interval. So let's choose that point that makes this work, right? This one that's given by the mean value theorem. Right? There's our Riemann sum. But now you start plugging in this side. You say, well, what do I, what do I actually have? I have f of x2 minus f of x1, right? And then f of x3 minus f of x2, and so on, and you keep going. And then the last one is going to be f of xn plus 1 minus f at xn, okay? And, and, and then you think about it and you notice some things. You notice that, wait a sec, this f of x2 is going to cancel with that f of x2. This f of x3 is going to cancel with an f of x3 that's there, right? The f of x4 is going to cancel, and the x5s and the x6s. f of xn is going to cancel with an f of xn that came in the term before it. The only ones that stick around are here and here. But f of xn plus 1 is f of b. f of x1 is f of a. And so the Riemann sum is exactly equal to f of b minus f of a, right? And, and so, so you actually have already this constant value. If you choose those ci's carefully in your Riemann sum, you get that value, right? And it's a constant. So if you take the limit as n goes to infinity, you still have that constant, and that gives you the integral. Okay? There we go. Two proofs, seven minutes. I think that's pretty good. Uh, at this point, we feel like uh, we've got a pretty good handle on the fundamental theorem, part two. Let's put it to use in a few more examples.